Good morning. I'm Nikki. And I'm Biro. Good morning. And this is a Monday Coffee with Jigsaw where we scan through last week's news and updates from across the Atlassian world. I have a special guest with me today, which is Peanut, our Chief Cuteness Officer. Yes, it's nice <laughs> yes, to say Peanut. Yes, well done. <laughs> uh, and the links for the sources of the topics we are going to discuss today are linked in the description. So shall awesome. we start with the so first topic? We're starting today on a very exciting note, uh, at least for me, this is exciting news um, because uh, uh, Atlassian just launched the cloud app promo codes. Um, and for me, it's a very exciting topic because of the flexibility um, this brings to your customer acquisition as a, an Atlassian marketplace partner as well as the onboarding side of things, because um, you can now generate, for example, a code of, uh, let's say, a 100% discount for like three months or something like that. Um, if, let's say, a customer needs more time to evaluate. And I think at least, you know, on our end, and I think a lot of the uh, marketplace partner will know, that it happens quite often that um, potential customer does not finalize their evaluation period in the 30 days. Um, and usually what used to happen was um, we've had absolutely no control over that end. Um, and uh, we th there's basically nothing we can do after a 30 days trial to extend um, a customer's trial. So that's really, really exciting. Um, a few other things that I've, I've kind of uh, quickly just scanned through the feature um, in our marketplace. Um, when you create a, a promo campaign, you can see a nice table where it shows you, you know, if you apply 20% discount, what it actually means for every single user license tier you have, which is pretty neat. Uh, you can also set time-based limits. So for example, you can specify when the code expires, but also for how long a customer can use the, the code. Um, and in each of these promo campaigns, you also have a list of uh, codes and uh, the customer that use the campaign, um, the, the user tier that they're on, and so on, which is useful information. The post here in the, um, in the screen and in the link uh, goes into detail more about the use cases for which you would use these discount codes. Uh, and provides uh, a few other resources that you can go through to understand them better. Yeah, so exciting news. Um, we're we're going to put the, this feature to good use. And um, yeah, I hope that everyone in the community will, will take advantage and find this as a very positive um, release. Okay. It definitely sounds like a lot of great features for the first initial launch of this of this feature. Um, yeah, it, it does feel like a complete, I don't know, I've never seen uh, the server discounts and how that works, um, but it does feel like a pretty mature release. And uh, it doesn't, at least for me, I don't know, I can't think of anything that's that um, it it's missing. Maybe others that have more experience with discount codes would say, well, it me it's it doesn't have this and that yet, but for me, it just looks... I was just expecting... Like, I was yeah. just expecting to get like a promo code with the expiration and that's it, like nothing else. So yeah, it uh, does have like, you have like a four step um, process where the last one is the validation and stuff, but it is quite, um, it's quite a nice piece of tool. Okay. Right. Cool. Move on. Uh, so to the next news. Uh, and for a change to the user community. So in the Atlassian user community, I discovered this useful video walkthrough of Team Central software. Uh, for the ones who don't know what the Team Central is, it's a project reporting tool where you can save your project status updates and set and track your goals. So it was basically built to easily share status reports. Uh, so in this five minutes walkthrough, you will learn how to set up the tool, goals and projects. And of course, you will see how the tool itself looks like if you didn't install it already. 
Uh, and if you are looking for a way to easily share project status reports, then you can go to the Atlassians Point 8 website. We were talking about it last week and register for Team Central and get started. And I think it's good to mention that the tool is free for everyone while it's still in beta. Yeah, we, we got to, to play with it for a bit very, very early on. We were part of the, I don't know, I think it was alpha program or something like that. Um, very useful. I think, I'm not sure, I've not looked at it recently. I think uh, I want to explore it more when there's a tighter integration with, uh, with Jira in that sense. It now because sits in our Jira instance. I was actually installing it last week when I was trying it for the for the morning presentation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, you basically still have a goals there. Uh, it looks very similar to the initial release, but I think there's that project, uh, automated project reporting part, which we didn't uh, use in the alpha. Right, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm very curious to give it another shot uh, and, see, and see how that works out. Uh, t -t 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 -t. All right. Next up, and let me share my screen. I have to do this every time because it automatically shares my screen when I start, so I can't do it automatically. Okay, share. Uh, where are we? Okay, there you go. Right. So the Temple Hackathon. Uh, a man, I'm 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 so excited about these kind of things because. Uh, it, it just it just signals how the the community maturing and moving forward. Uh, this, this is a great initiative from from Temple, and I really applaud the team over there for organizing it. We really need more partner led initiatives like this that are focused on the developer community. Um, so I was really excited when I heard about this hackathon. This hackathon uh, is held on twenty eighth. Of April, so this month, I think it's in a week or so. Um, and it does seem sold out, so uh, you might not have a chance to participate, but I would just um, go and inquire, look at the look at the post, look at the page, and maybe inquire with Tempo if you still if you can still um, register for it. Uh, I think they had over a hundred registrations, more than a hundred registrations, which is which is mind blowing to think about it, given that it's i think it's their first public hackathon uh, so yeah it just uh, it just shows that the need for these type of initiatives um is quite high the demand the topic of the the topics of the hackathon are around uh, jira and tempo um, automation integration but also touches on uh, machine learning uh everyone is invited to join the hackathon um, you don't have to have specific um, traits <laughs> to put it like that. Uh, and the total price pool is um, uh, $2,500. Uh, really cool, really cool initiative. Um, again, well done. I think, uh, you know, this kind of motivates us to think of similar events that, you know, we can tailor for the uh, developer community moving forward. So yeah, well done uh, Temple for kind of like, um, let's say pioneering um, these kind of events for for all of us. It's quite impressive uh, to be sold out just in a week when they announced, uh, I think they announced it last week. So we didn't even manage to mention in time. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I can see on the screen that it says 236 uh, people attending. So more than more over 200 not over 100 so yeah yeah it's pretty cool all okay, right let me move to the next one perfect thank you so uh there is a new exciting feature coming to confluence and it's publishing functionality so with this feature as the name suggests, you will be able to schedule when you would like your confluence page or blog to be published and you can choose the exact time and the date of the publish uh, it's really handy, for example, when you're using Confluence as blog or documentation and you have some kind of content calendar that you follow. So I will definitely use this feature as well for myself when updating the documentation when we have some new releases and features. So I don't need to 
I don't need to come back and I always forget to publish and then Bero needs to chase me. Uh, so if you can't see the schedule button in your confluence yet, then don't worry, the changes are rolled out gradually, gradually and uh, it will be there soon. Yeah, this is this this is a really interesting um, feature and I think it's going to open um, open up to a lot of possibilities and a lot of um, implementations of different um, different kinds. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we're going to see stories of this feature um, in you know in implementations in ways that we wouldn't even think about to be honest. Yeah, um, I can see Carlos already commented uh, under this post. He actually has a um, blog and he's managing it in Confluence about Jira, and I think uh, he's translating the articles um, and talking about the Atlassian tools in Italian. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that no, that's 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 useful for um, for that as well. Um, you know, for for if you're if you're using it as a blog kind of um, platform, that's very useful. Uh, all right, and next up, let me share my screen is about Atlassian and Fortune magazine. Open up the post. There you go. All right. So um, I was reading the other day, the other week, um, another uh, piece of article, um, piece of news, I would say, uh, where Atlassian has announced that it is now a distributed first company. And I, I don't think that comes as a surprise or news to a lot of people. Um, it's been Atlassian has been vocal about uh, basically post pandemic uh, and during pand pandemic allowing um, their employees to choose whether they want to work um, from home permanently, um, part time, or, or uh, work from the office and such. Um, I think this is an expected move for them to move to you know preferred option being working uh, distributed, working remotely. Uh, I think this major change in work work culture uh, during and post the pandemic seems to have had a very positive impact in, in the organization. Um, Fortune magazine took note of this and seems like Atlassian has now made it in uh, the top 100 best companies to work for. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of other reasons, uh, but I think the distributed remote um, culture was the the focus um, of that. So yeah, well done, well done, Atlassian. If you're looking for a role, yeah, recommend Atlassian um, as a workplace. <laughs> I, I think it's quite interesting to like highlight the remote work, like now when everyone's kind of. Um, it seems like everyone is f fed up with, with that and wants to go back to the office. But when you think about it, uh, when we go back to when we go back to normal, um, I remember when I was working from home, I actually liked it because it was less stressful for me, and um, then I could just go out with my friends after work. So I think that's the big difference um, to meet people after your work hours as well. Yeah, true. Um... It's interesting because I think there's a split and I think that um, uh, the article that I was looking at was that a very low percentage of Atlassian employees when asked were um, excited to get back to the office. Um, so clearly there is, at least in the Atlassian ecosystem, uh, in the Atlassian, sorry, the Atlassian organization, but I'm pretty sure because they're such a big company, it's kind of reflective on the general trend in the work uh, place, where which is you know people starting to prefer, you know, a remote, um, more um, how should I put it, uh, flexible way of working rather than a nine to five in the office. So yeah, so but that's not for everyone, and I kind of agree with you as well. I, I'm a I'm an office type of person. I, I like the buzz of the office and being around people. And, you know, um, yeah, like it, for, for me, I, I kind of agree with that. I miss that. 
Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to work um, 24, 7, 9 to 5 um, in an office and uh, have mandatory pro uh, presence in the office, you know. So, um, yeah, uh, I agree with that. Um, and okay. yeah, we'll so see we where, where things move on move, uh, forward. Okay, yeah, let me stop just rambling about. I need to, I need to stop you, yes. <laughs> uh, we got the comment, by the way, from LinkedIn. All right, okay. Yeah, so, all right. Scheduled conference post is a game changer. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's, you know, we don't give it enough um, credit to put it like that. It, it's a big thing. Um, it's really good feature, yeah. I yeah, think it's going to help a lot thank of Thank you people. for the comment. Really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Where were we? Do, do, do. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So this one is going to be really quick. Um, so Atlassian Team 21, if you don't know, is starting in only eight days. And it means um, because we are getting really close to the start day, uh, start date of the event, the team platform is now open and you can log in and plan your events, see the whole lineup, browse through the sessions and select in which you are interested in. There is a, really a lot of sessions to choose from. So I think it will be really interesting event and we will learn something new. So you can uh, you can see here I'm locked in my account. I hope I'm not sharing any personal details, uh, but here you can see uh, and you can plan your basically your list of the event. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool um, interface. Yeah, it looks it looks really nice. Yeah, I think I think they're uh, putting a bit more effort. Uh, I don't think. It's a it's a completely different so it, it is a completely different platform from what they used last year for the summit, um, and I think they put a bit more thought into it because last year there there was there was heaps of problems um, from you know just technical crashes but also with how the sessions were conducted. Well, so, but so. they did it in like a month or two, so the whole yeah, event. true. They yeah. they had to adapt and such. I, you know, I'm not saying. Um, I'm not putting the blame on Atlas, <laughs> right? But you know, things. You know, it's it's good to see that things are improving from now. Uh, they did have a year to think about. It. Yes, much better than a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we want to the next topic. All right. So we have some news from uh, some post from Business Wire. Hope you can see my screen. Yes. All right. Let me move on to. All right. So, um, yeah. So the uh, Atlassian released uh, the third quarter preliminary, um, some pre preliminary financial um, results. Now, to be clear, um, the quarter quarterly report is not out yet. It's scheduled to go out on 29th of this month um this is just a you know a preliminary overview we will for sure cover the um the financial report in our future monday coffee with uh Jixo, and we'll probably have a um special guest on the stream to to dissect uh to dissect that report a bit better but uh this article from business wire talks about the revenue projected for the quarter um what impacted the growth like for example the spike in server sales pre stoppage of all uh, new uh, server licensing and uh, uh, more a few other um, headlines the post also shares uh, details on when and where the report will be published uh, including the live investor relations uh, webcast which you can find links uh, in here too. Okay. I'm really curious about the actual report. So you said in 10 days, right? Yeah, 29. Yeah, yeah. the reminder <laughs> and read it immediately. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, the last one 
on our list is uh, article of the week. And this time it's an article from Atlassian blog with a title, Does Transparency at Work Boost Creativity? HubSpot thinks so. So this one definitely caught my eye because recently I wrote an article about creative thinking on our own blog at JAXA. So as the title suggests, HubSpot is betting on transparency and sharing top business priorities, but also what is business not focusing on and why with everyone in the company. But I guess we are all curious how uh, they are doing this with so many employees on board, because that must be crazy. But the solution is actually quite simple. They use blocks in Confluence. So maybe they will <laughs> take use of the new schedule functionality. Uh, where the executive team posts updates quite often and where employees share their feedback in comments under these posts. So they get this real real time engagement and feedback on all the news around the company. And this way, everyone can engage early on and share their opinions. There is also an example where HubSpot was really, really brave. They were continuing to share the financials and monthly sales with everyone in the company, even when they were preparing to go public and after. But they said it was good because it gave everyone context in their day to day job. So the final thoughts on the approach in general, HubSpot team says that transparency unlocks smarter, more strategic innovation and helps their employees take ownership of their own decisions. And who wouldn't like that? Yeah, well, I mean, we we do that as well. So we are internally, we're fully transparent. There's no piece of information that's a secret um, to to our employees from a you know financial point of view and such. We've been doing that, um, and I feel that you know we're not doing it like this. Um, we have more of like um, verbal discussions uh, once a month. Um, but I do feel that's, you know, that's the way forward. I think it motivates, inspires everyone in the team to know basically how healthy the, the company is and, and how things are going in general. Um, yeah, so they, they basically get 95% uh, uh, of people logging into the confluence. So 95% of their employees log in and read this post. If someone would be skeptical that no one would read that. Um, but also, you know, like in a small companies, it's really easy to share. There is like a space to share. And when you have like 10, 20, 50 employees, it's quite easy to sit down with everyone and get them on board with uh, everyone was, everything what's going on in the company. But this was really, really interesting of approach of a really huge company and that they're doing it as a startups, basically. Yeah, and, and to, to be honest, I, there's there's a there's a threshold, I would say, when the team is at a certain size where these like monthly company updates might not be as effective. And I, you know, I've I've seen it in the past where you know reaching a certain level of number of employees, you know, you see people in these monthly updates kind of like drifting or not taking on the information um you know that much that well because your messaging also starts tailoring to a to a wider audience and such so i guess there's a threshold on where you can start you know using something like this like a conference page where you can actually uh write down your your updates uh yeah, not you know, it's not one sided thing. You can try it very early on as well if you prefer a more written um, type of communication. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe one day we'll we'll tr give it a try. As it might well. be good with really remote teams. You know, like when you can't get everyone on the call, then you just like write the blocks and uh, like message under them. I yeah, think very I true. That might be good. Also for the people with the different schedules or who can't go on the call in the exact time. Yeah, very, very true. Um, all right. So that's kind of it for this week. There was actually quite a lot still uh, beneath this, but we only have time for what we have time. Um, yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Monday Coffee with Jigsaw whether you're watching it live or the recording afterwards. Just a reminder, the links of everything that we've talked about are in the description, either below or wherever you are um, on the platform. Um, and so don't forget to check out and 
read the the things and uh, all of the topics and don't just trust me and Nikki's opinion about them. Um, if you have any suggestions on what we should uh, talk about next week, let us know in the comments. So yeah, um, we'll see all of you who are watching uh, next Monday at uh, 9.30. See you next week. Bye-bye. And music.